Hey there, I'm Sage, and you're watching D&D Daily, where we release new D&D content every day. If you're looking for D&D inspiration and information, then you are in the right spot, because today we're going to be talking about the Pseudo-Giant, a Goliath aspiring to be a Frost Giant. In order to play the Pseudo-Giant, you are going to need to be a Goliath and a Rune Knight fighter. The Pseudo-Giant grew up in a village in the Cold Mountains near a Frost Giant village. He admired the Frost Giants for their power, their strength, and their culture. He especially took a liking to the leader of the Frost Giant clan. This, this massive Frost Giant was able to tame a white dragon that now serves as his mount. His dream in life is to follow the, the example set by this Frost Giant leader. He is going to find and tame a dragon and earn his right to join the Frost Giant clan. The Shido Giant loves a good fight, he loves a good wrestling match, and he loves a good drink. He is a dreamer who dreams about being something he's not. He is naive to normal society, normal society being the cities down in the valley, since he had, grew up in a village near the mountains. And he hates dragons just like the giants hate dragons. He has taken on that hatred. He does not like dragons one bit. In combat, he is a grapple specialist. He can strike, tank, and control. As a grapple specialist, your bread and butter is going to be running up, grappling, and using the push action to knock them prone. So now they're prone with zero movement speed so they can't stand up. So now you get advantage on every attack against them and they have disadvantage on every attack against you. This goes for your whole party, so your whole party can just stand around the prone enemy and stab them to death. Also keep in mind that you can do this to two enemies, one with each arm. So you can grab an enemy, grab an enemy, trip them, trip them. Now you have two pinned enemies, and you can headbutt them for your damage while your party goes and stabs them. That's really the key as a grapple specialist. Using his ability to make himself large, he can grapple up to a huge creature, even at low levels. So if you've ever wanted to grapple a dragon, wrestle with it, pin it to the ground and punch it in the face, this is your guy. Really embrace creative combat with this character, throw people off cliffs, drag them away from their allies, and do the grapple prone combo often. Out of combat, be the party's muscle. You are strong, and never underestimate how many problems you can solve just by being a muscle head. Break things, bend things, push things, carry things, solve problems the simple way. Don't be afraid to intimidate your enemies by, with shows of strength. Bend a bar in their face, break a bone in front of their face, flex your muscles, intimidate them using your body. If your DM's cool, they'll let you uh, do an intimidation check with your strength modifier instead of your charisma. The Rune Knight would also be the life of the party. He's going to be the first to drink and going to be the first to start singing songs horribly. Some of the key mechanics you're going to want to apply with your, with your pseudo giant is going to be proficiency in athletics and expertise if you can find a way to sneak that in. That's going to be really huge for all your grapple checks and also just your creative combat in general. The unarmed fighting style is also very important to take with the pseudo giant. It does extra damage when they're grappled. Um, it lets you punch people out and kind of be a mixed martial artist fighter. Um, yeah, so if you want to have a, a little bit of a Muay Thai match with a dragon, again, here's your guy to do it. And if you're dealing with an odd stat in your strength, take the skill expert feat to gain that expertise in athletics. Otherwise, just prioritize your stat boost, strength, and constitution. Your weaknesses include difficulty dealing with ranged combat. You don't have a lot of options for dealing with somebody flying in the air shooting arrows down on you. Also, you are better against single enemies than you are groups of enemies. You can only hold so many people still. As an NPC, the pseudo giant has potential to be a big bad. Having tamed a young white dragon, he showed his strength and gained entry into the giant clan, maybe even having giant servants who do his bidding. If you are playing him as a big bad, make sure to show that he has tamed this dragon, even though the dragon would normally be far bigger than him, the dragon shows submission to him, kind of giving that intimidation factor. And don't forget that giants hate dragons and the pseudo giant is no different, so he would want to exterminate them from the land, and this might be what leads the pseudo giant into conflict with the party. Maybe they have a silver giant f or silver dragon friend, for example. He could also be also easily be slotted in as a one-on-one -on -one fighter for your party strongman in the local arena. 
On the other hand, if there was a bad dragon your party needs to kill, then they might find an ally in the dragon-hating Goliath. How would you use the pseudo-giant in one of your games, and what would you do to make them better? You can also tell us what you thought of this video by giving us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Either way, helps us know what you, what kind of content you like. And on the next episode of D&D Flavor Builds, we're going to be talking about The Descendant, a man cursed with power. Hit the subscribe button because you're not going to want to miss it. Take it easy and we'll see you on the next one.